Well, good afternoon and welcome back to Off the Press. This is TBC Media's twice a week show we do looking at local government and, of course, uh, this year, uh, a general election year, local elections. I'm Theo Douglas. I cover city government for the Bakersfield, California, and uh, I'm joined this afternoon by my colleague in uh, county government, James Berger, who covers uh, the county of Kern. Um, also uh, joining us today is uh, Russell Johnson. He's the owner of uh, Common Sense Consulting and a uh, former uh, Bakersfield uh, City Council representative from Ward 7. That's uh, down in the south. For those of you who don't have your Bakersfield City Council ward map handy, I know I have mine. But uh, we're also joined this afternoon by Bakersfield's longest serving member of the City Council, and that is uh, Councilwoman Jackie Sullivan. She was uh, first elected in the uh, spring of 1995, and uh, as we're in an election year, she's uh, up for re-election. She's seeking her sixth four-year term, and uh, that is just, uh, that's an impressive uh, career. And, uh, Thank you. Just uh, very exciting. Uh, well, yes, I, I know mm -hmm. you've had uh, many uh, exciting moments uh, on the council. I've uh, been privileged to uh, to witness some of them, some of the uh, discussions you folks have had uh, about everything from uh, transportation to development to just uh, local issues. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, before the break, uh, we were talking about uh, why it was that uh, you uh, went into. Um, this area, you know, uh, local government, mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned that you you simply have a, a heart for service, uh, and uh, you know I'm I'm just struck by your uh, desire to uh, continue to serve. Now you know you've uh, been on the council for for 21 years now, uh, just a remarkable uh, lengthy tenure, and so uh, <coughs> just wondering, uh, you know, this time around, uh, you you're facing a challenger. You haven't. Uh, been opposed uh, during the last two elections. Uh, what, what's driving the you now? The last three elections. Excuse actually. me. Is it the last three? Um, <laughs> Twelve years. Twelve years. Okay. Right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, tell me, what uh, what prompted you to seek that sixth full term? Oh goodness. Well, um, I th I feel like I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I have my office in my home. So I'm very accessible. Mm -hmm. I know how to take care of business. Mm -hmm. um, my uh, constituents appreciate the fact that, you know, in fact, many times they say, um, is this Mrs. Sullivan's secretary? <laughs> and I will say, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's also Mrs. Sullivan. Right, <laughs> right. But, um, you know, we have a very responsive staff, and, and uh, I know just who to call to get good re you know, rapid results. Mm -hmm. And we have like our transportation plan is, is midway. We have, we have things going on. Um, I've always mm -hmm. been supportive of anything that, that we can, can possibly happen in our city, mm -hmm. anything good. I support it. I see. You know, we, we have, we're midway, um, uh, with our, you know, with our Centennial Corridor, mm -hmm. that's going to be amazing. That's mm -hmm. going to be very beneficial. And, um, um, of course, 24th Street. And um, so um, I'm, I'm just, I could easily go on. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I may just challenge myself and, and wonder how long I can actually continue. <laughs> uh, but um, I just know how to do it. My, I have a very positive, hands-on approach mm -hmm. to um, handling the, the, the sixth ward. And so I'm looking forward to another term. Well, very good. Mm -hmm. So you talked a little bit, Jackie, about the uh, trip projects, the transportation projects. And um, you know, when we served together, you had a track record of supporting those uh, pretty mm -hmm. heavily, mm -hmm. uh, just as I did. Mm -hmm. um, but you also serve with uh, a colleague that isn't in favor of the trip projects. And uh, I, I was there at those meetings, so I know what, th what that was like. But explain for the folks at home what it's like having an <coughs> issue like trip and its importance, and then to have one of your colleagues being so opposed to those advancing those projects forward. Wh what was that like? How have you dealt with that? And, and how do you deal with that council yeah. member? Well, good question. Um, of course, we are each one, we each have our own vote. We are each responsible for our own vote. But when an issue, when issues continue to be six to one, I feel that council member should reevaluate and consider the fact that perhaps he is 
he's not doing anyone any, uh, any favors. In fact, even his own ward. I feel that it, it, regarding uh, 24th Street, you know, I really, I, cons I consider it almost to be an obstructionist because just against, against, distrusting, dis, um, uh, not, ex not, not believing, not accepting recommendations. And we, we have one of the best staffs, I'm sure. How could we have a better staff? You know, we have an excellent staff. Uh, well, well paid, well respected uh, team that, in, that that works hard for the city. So I I feel that it would be appropriate for that council member uh, regarding 24th Street to um, to help his ward get on get on board and start looking at the positive. It's going to happen, you know. And and it first started. It was first set pretty much in stone in 2008 and was 7-0 until the present uh, council member was elected, um, let's see, I guess it was 2010. Was Actually, no, uh, I'm going to step in and correct you. Yes, yes 2012, you. and thank we're speaking you. here. Uh, we've uh, mentioned him several times right. without name. He has a name. It's uh, Councilman Terry Maxwell. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's that's wise. Um, that's right. It was 2012. So it, it was unanimous. We were all on board. Um, first of all, we were blessed to get a huge amount of money from from Bill, Bill Thomas before he retired from council. Well, from, that's true. From Congress. Congressman Thomas. That is the, that's how this all got started, a huge amount. Mm -hmm. That there are certainly uh, Southern California, there are cities, cities all, all around us that would have given anything. But because of Bill's um, determination to help out his own, his own area, Kern County, Bakersfield, was given this huge amount of money of federal dollars. Yes, federal dollars. So that's marks. how this all started. So we knew, uh, we knew how lucky, how fortunate we were. And so that's when the planning started. And we were on board from the beginning, and we were going to put the money to the best use possible. It's really our responsibility for um, to work out a the, the the best transportation. You know, we're responsible for for public safety, um, uh, jobs, of course, but transportation that's pretty important to an area. So you brought up public safety, and there was an IACP study, the International Association Chiefs of Police study, that was uh, done a, a few years ago while I was on the council, and uh, immediately uh, once we got that report the council implemented many of the reforms in that report. However, there's still some that are sitting out there. Um, do you have any thoughts on how any of those reforms that are left in that report can be applied to improve public safety in the community? And are, do you see any being worked on right now? Well, you know, I would have to refresh my memory on that, Russell. I, I, I have confidence in, um, you know, public safety is, is always number one in council goals. So we're all committed to that. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're all committed to that, and, and we continually, I feel that we're always open for suggestions also, because if something is pointed out that we can do better, um, I, I, f I feel that we do better. So I, I can't remember specifically what year, that was a number of years ago, but, uh, but I think things are, I think everything is pretty well balanced. I see. <laughs> um. And Theo, I'm, if I'm taking all the time, feel free. Um, one, one issue that's recent, happened just a few weeks ago, uh, we asked your opponent about, which was the food truck ordinance. Mm -hmm. And he actually <laughs> um, advocated a position that was a little a little different. I'd never heard it before. He, he wasn't uh, opposed to the food truck ordinance. His, his position was that he thought they, it should only apply during normal business operating hours. And if a brick and mortar is closed, there's no reason why uh, a food truck uh, shouldn't be able to do business out in front of their establishment. So um, my question to you, you were there for the food truck ordinance debate. What were your thoughts on it? Do you think you guys made the right decision? And what do you think about your opponent's suggestion? Is it something maybe to look at? Mm -hmm. Well, um, <coughs> now, w what time would he? There are definitely differences of opinion where, um, where this this subject is concerned. There are those that don't think there should be any regulation at all. 
well, we, I don't, I don't go along with that. And really, this is kind of a work in, 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 in progress. I mean, in process, progress. Um, it's something that can be changed, so we're going to try to see how it goes. But I definitely value the, the plight of, of the, the, the brick and mortar business. So even though I welcome um, this new business of, of the food trucks, they need to be a certain distance from, from one of the eating establishments. Now, what you're talking about, that is interesting. I haven't heard that. But if we're talking about late at night, or like on a Sunday, if they were closed on Sunday, uh, th okay, then it would be different because it's when they're open. I, I think that's how that would be looked at. So um, we'd have to look into that. But it would be, I, I'm, I'm thinking that it would be while an establishment is open. But there were some that, um, that thought that at night they should be able to be around um, maybe, you know, after the, the, uh, uh, the um, bars close. At, uh, and, the <clears throat> and the police feel strongly that that's when there are problems. That's, mm -hmm. that's when people are, are not getting along. And so they want people to just go to their cars. And someone said, well, wouldn't it be good for them to have something to eat? Well, they shouldn't be planning to drive if they've had too much to drink. But yet the police asked us, please, to, to cut off the, the time the food trucks would be there um, Cut, up, cut it off before the, the establishments closed at, at 2 o'clock. And so I, I listened to that, made sense to me. And so um, that's, I think we have it probably about as good as we can have it. But if we think that something would be better, we'll change it. Now, I'm going to switch gears. We're talking about food. And uh, I've been to the dinner that you hold mm -hmm. for In God We Trust. So my question about In God We Trust is, T tell us a little bit about that. That's city related. It's municipal related. You've carried it across the state, across the counties, even to other states. If I remember correctly, you're moving the In God We Trust effort out uh, out of Bakersfield. Tell us a little bit about that journey. How you started. How it's going. Yeah, um, very it's kind exciting. of a legacy issue of yours. It's yeah, one it's, thing to it's be proud very of. wonderful. It's very exciting. I think certainly very. You know, I'm a patriot. I love God, and I love our country. Um, actually, we, um, early in 2001, I heard on the radio that um, there was a small group back east protesting that our national motto, In God We Trust, was on a building. And I thought, hmm, tr protesting the motto. First of all, it's our national, it is officially our national motto. It was, it was voted by Congress July 30th, 1956, yep. so our one and only national motto. But they were protesting, of course, it was because it bears God's name. So I love our motto, you know, because it bears God's name. And it's very important to the true history of our country. So I just thought, gosh, they're, they're wanting to take it down. I'm one of, the, one of the decision makers in Bakersfield. Hmm. I wonder, and this happened to be on a Friday night, uh, so the first thing I wanted to um, wait until actually that was at 5 o'clock when I heard that. The, the work week was over. So I thought, I wonder, I wonder if, it's, if it's legal to display, if it would be legal to display those words in, in our city hall. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll wait. First thing Monday morning, I will call our city attorney and ask. And I have to say that was the longest weekend. And by Sunday night, I couldn't even sleep, Russell. Mm -hmm. I was so mm -hmm. excited about the thought of just, I was going to do it. I, I, I had it figured out that I would probably have the support of the council members. And 2 o'clock in the morning, and then 4 o'clock in the morning. And finally, at um, uh, uh, right after 8 o'clock, I, I waited until 5 minutes after 8 uh, calling uh, Bart Thilchin, actually, was our city attorney. Mm -hmm. And I, when I asked him, I said, Bart, I have the most amazing, exciting, wonderful idea. I'm, I'm wanting to, is it legal to display our national motto 
in our council chambers at City Hall. And I could just visualize him just, I could just see him roll his eyes and think, oh no, why is she asking this question? But he said, yes, it's legal. He said, it, it's, 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 it's legal. So I said, okay, Bart, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Then we had 9-11, um, wanted, n didn't want this connected with any one event, waited until the beginning of 2002, second uh, um, February, actually, of, two, of 2002. It passed um, 6 to 1. It passed 6 to 1. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, so it, 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 we were the first in California. So Bakersfield is the founding city. It was in the paper for that next day. The cities around Bakersfield started following our lead. Uh, we are the first in the country to have, we have, of course, we have 11 cities. All 11 cities are now displaying in God we trust in their chambers. Um, 2002, the supervisors voted yes. They now have our motto over their county seal. So we're the only, first and only in the country that have the, the cities and then the covering of the county displaying in God we trust. We have 128 in California, mm -hmm. cities and counties in California that are displaying our national motto. And we have almost 650 across the country. We'd have two or three times more than that, but it's just a matter of getting the word out. And you've, you've done this all by starting this nonprofit, kind of expanding it. I've even seen yeah. your League of California Cities meetings yeah. trying to push and encourage cities right, to do right. it. Right, uh, Just getting the word out. And it, it's very encouraging, Russell, how receptive people are. And we go to the elected officials because they are the decision makers. Mm -hmm. And when they vote yes, then it happens. So it's so doable. It's so easy. And it's it's just you know it's wonderful. And, and I bet it was a it was a struggle. You know, you talk about having to, you know, raise money to start anything. I see your flyer now, and it's got like five thousand dollars or more. Yeah. You probably get a few of those in, yeah. right? And then you've got even below. But you s you had to raise a lot of money to I mean push this out to different mm -hmm. sectors in the country. Right. Well, the main expense, of course, we have a very good accountant. And uh, I, I, I am That's so critical. conservative. <laughs> yeah, I am so. Cons I mean, I, I am so proud of that checkbook because there's nothing. There's nothing that's that's. We don't go to lunch. We don't do any of that that stuff. It's it's just used for in God we trust America, and um, we go to the National League of Cities every year, and the National League of Counties. That's how. That is how we reach elected officials all over the country. And so those are our expenses. And then, of course, we go to the, the League of California Cities, but that's we drive to that. So we're, we're very good about um, just, just being very careful with our, because they're donated dollars that we appreciate very much. So we're making the most of it. And we, the long-term project, the goal is every city and county in America. <laughs> so, and it's, uh, they're, they're just so receptive when they hear about it. They either mm -hmm. don't like the idea yeah. or they're delighted and they want to do it in their Very city. Good. Well, yeah, I remember the last time I wrote about uh, In God We Trust, that number of uh, cities and counties nationwide stood at 632. So clearly it keeps growing. Right. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. We're going to go to you. break now, but uh, we'll be back shortly with more from uh, incumbent councilwoman Jackie Sullivan, who, of course, is uh, seeking her sixth full term in November. Thanks for watching Off the Press. I'm Theo Douglas. And good night.